Today, Dr. Pi is going to show you what he's discovered on Cisco's website with Python and Git. Yes, thank you for the introduction, little high-pitched person who always seems to uh, interfere with these videos. Today, I'm looking at uh, the increasing amount of Python and Git uh, material which Cisco are publishing and encouraging students, users, customers, whatever you want to call them, to use. Um, on the screen we can see a Git GitHub tutorial looking at um, repositories and how to set up and add files and commit and so on. Obviously all of these topics are covered elsewhere on the wonderful World Wide Web. But I thought I'd draw your attention to these on the Cisco DevNet website. They kind of overlap with a lot of the topics and recent videos which I've been showing. Now there's a reason for that. Just let you watch this a little bit. You might have seen this in a recent Dr. Pi video. Committing to Git. Recently I retook a Cisco CCMP certification to keep me up to date for another three years. However, there was a cutoff for passing that exam 20th of February. After that, they've redesigned the certification exams and now you gather points and you have to obtain a certain number of points. I think it's 200 um, to be able to recertify when your current certification expires. Obviously, having just retaken the old exam, I'm now valid for three years. So we can see Cisco are discussing on this little, 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 little learning lab, the value of programmability. They actually explain why they like Python and they're encouraging it. Now, I think there's a little subgroup within Cisco who are pushing this. Um, and there's a very obvious reason why they're pushing this, because to be able to use these new features, API, application programming interface, you need the latest hardware to be able to run the latest software to be able to run the APIs. So they're pushing this to get everyone to replace their old iOS 12 or iOS 15 switches and routers and so on. They mentioned their API maturity. There's a reason why this <coughs> programmability has not been available previously. Um, they mentioned SOAP and other older, less user-friendly ways of talking to their devices. So an API is a way how you can talk to the Cisco device, such as a switch or a router, and you can get information from it. Now, previously you could have done that, just do show run, um, and then you could see the config via a terminal such as PuTTY. However, you had to be a human being to do that, or uh, I suppose you could have had a lot of monkeys with typewriters maybe, but either way, you couldn't really automate that. Now you can, you can <clears throat> collect loads of information using the API, as you can see in the top of that section of code there. The response is what the switch or the router sends back to the bit of code that you've written. Um, and then you can 
interrogate that big chunk of response and pick out the finer details that you're really interested in. Um, so we're talking about get, post, put and delete the your future job, sorry I digress, your future job role mm, that is a question mark for all of us isn't it and if you are learning Python I think you might have a slim chance of surviving in the Cisco world. I remember a few years ago when Wi-Fi access points were being installed everywhere when IP phone systems were being rolled out there was a lot of freelance contract work available around around 2010 2009 obviously the credit crunch global financial crisis and the theft of all our money by the bankers compromised that um, authors bias platform flexibility power and flexibility domain something or other yeah whatever but obviously it's good because you're probably watching this because you're either interested in Linux or Python or Raspberry Pi so if you're young and you're learning to tinker with a Raspberry Pi that will probably lead you to write some Python and once you go down that avenue you will gradually become more competent with programming Python and then that could lead you to Cisco DevNet if you went to the world of networks. What is an API? Mm. So Cisco have published software returns results via an API. API helps developers create apps that benefit the end user. There we go, get, get, post, put, delete. HTTP. Essentially what we're doing is we're collecting information from a device via a middleman. I heard someone describe it as an API being like the waiter who comes and takes your order and then he wanders off and talks to the kitchen staff and comes back with something. I think that's quite a good analogy. If you'd like to give me a round of applause or send me lots of money for being so insightful, I'd appreciate that. What is REST? REST is uh, something or other that, uh, who cares? It's, it's how you get stuff from an API. Let's give it three ticks. Rate this lab, yep, right. There's a wealth of information here and obviously you want to pick out the Python bits probably if you're that way inclined. Python. So we've looked at Git. Git's obviously a programming language independent but as I'm learning it's very useful and it's something which you really ought to be familiar with if you're going to write Python and work with Python in a professional capacity or amateur even if you're an amateur Git's free, GitHub is free there's some um, starter bits and pieces here, lists, dictionaries, tuples so it starts off from scratch virtually and all this is free as long as you create a Cisco DevNet login you can log in with your Google credentials or Facebook or GitHub or whatever as well so no excuses for not having a look at this I think it's interesting to look at this because it shows a very large networking company network equipment vendor embracing open source Python etc and it really should or should give you some encouragement to persevere with Python and here we go there's some little examples here using the random function showing you how to write functions um, and so this will, 
What I'm showing you here will, if you've not already done so, it will enable you to learn about Python, functions, GitHub, um, Cisco obviously, if you're not familiar with Cisco. Um, you probably need to know about networking and how IPv4, at least IPv4 networks are connected together and you need to know the difference between a switch and a router and you probably need to know what interfaces are on a switch. There is um, a network fundamentals section at the end of one of their courses as well so if you do go to this website, as I say, you can familiarise yourself and um, yeah, start learning Python code, Git, um, sample code, Meraki, Meraki or wireless Wi-Fi access points if you haven't already come across them, sample code. It all, I think it's a good practice to look at as much sample code as you can. See how different people write their code and even though they should conform to PEP8 which is the recommended format for writing Python, uh, you'll see different people's approach to actually solving the problem and the logic and how they actually structure the code rather than just how they write it. Apologise if you were hoping for a CNC video or some comedy or some cat pictures, but I just thought I'd. Here we go. 16.5, so new. That'll be expensive. Um, yeah, hope it's been interest in, ter, 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 interesting and um, yeah, have a look. Do whatever you want, but don't blame me if uh, if it takes the world by storm. And you're left with an Abacus and a Sony Vario. And you're messing about with Excel even when you're 70 because you haven't got a pension and you're working in a stupid company that insists on using Excel. Um, you may have gathered I don't like Excel and I think it's a waste of human life. But <sighs> CSVs are okay. But yeah. Don't run your company with them, for fuck's sake. Well, that's it, I suppose. I'll um, see you around, yeah?